Well, a little bit earlier, we talked about colleges returning to class and soon it will be back to school for kids in kindergarten through high school. And we know that parents have a lot of questions about how to juggle a job with being a parent and supervising kids when they're learning remotely at home. Reporter Sean Giggy had some fun with this and along with his mini me went looking for answers for an expert who can help you with balancing it all. All right, class, let's get started. A lot of kids are going to be learning online, which means a lot of parents will be going crazy. What are you doing, son? Dad, you're not my teacher. I cannot deal with this. Dr. Waddell, how am I supposed to make sure he doesn't fall behind? I really think it boils down to just like as if we were still going to school every day in the buildings, the same thing holds true. Stephen Waddell is a former teacher and superintendent and currently a visiting professor for the UNT College of Education. He says if parents are stressed about their kids learning from home, there are two important things they can do to take that worry away. A routine to keep up with the work and close communication with the schools. First, Dr. Waddell says kids should have a structured schedule, just like they do when they're inside the school. Have designated times that they're gonna do their work. Try to put some routine into what they do. In addition to making a structured schedule, Dr. Waddell says don't be afraid to talk to the teacher. I think teachers are glad when, when parents reach out to them and, and, and ask for assistance. Okay. <laughs> Hey, Mr. G, hope you don't mind me interrupting for a second, but uh, I need a little bit of help figuring out the right schedule for him. Oh, of course, L let me just finish the this arithmetic lesson and then I can talk to you once we take a break, okay? Oh, <laughs> sounds good, yeah, okay. <laughs> do the things that you know how to do best. You know how to be a good parent. Use your parenting skills to solve this problem. Dad, I have work to do. Can you? Right, right. <laughs> Have a good day, son. And uh, stick to your schedule. I am not envious of parents who are gonna be trying to do that balance. Uh, one of my friends um, just moved into a new house and was just redoing the attic space, one of the rooms, and literally mm -hmm. creating a classroom for her daughter who's gonna be learning remotely this semester. Sure, and for families that have two, three, four kids yeah. that all need to be spaced out and have their private space and need help and attention, I mean, some parents, uh, they can't help but feel overwhelmed. Yeah. We'll continue to be seeking out that expert advice to help you through all that. Uh, finally, on today's town hall, though, some unexpected good news from the airline industry. Yeah, it has been hit especially hard by the pandemic. But today, word that one major carrier is making a change that could save you a lot of money and it will continue even once travel gets back to normal. Yeah, we're going to get the specifics now from Tom Costello with NBC News. He joins us from Reagan Airport in Washington. Hey, Tom. Good day. The situation really could not be more dire for the nation's airlines. Passenger volume down 70 to 80 percent system wide, all airlines. And now as they wait to hear whether more government aid may be coming their way, United Airlines is taking steps to ensure customers keep coming back. United is this morning making a big announcement, waiving change fees on all but its cheapest tickets for U.S. travel permanently. Our customers have always asked for that flexibility uh, and we're giving them the flexibility and confidence uh, that they can buy a ticket and know that if their plans change, if anything changes, uh, they, can, they can make that change for free. The cynic is going to say you could have done this a year ago when you were flush with cash and you had more customers than you needed. Now that you need customers badly, now you're going to drop the change fees because you need customers. And we're making the bet, and I think it's the right one, uh, that doing the right thing for customers in the long term is going to pay off. So United is permanently dropping the ticket change fees. I asked, would you consider dropping the other thing that passengers hate the most, paying for luggage? The answer is no. They say that the infrastructure to support bringing luggage on board planes is so extensive and so expensive, they have to continue charging for bags. I'm Tom Costello at Reagan National Airport. Back to you. All right, Tom, thank you very much. I got to say, Mary Alice, I don't know how many times over the years I've had to pay that change fee because sometimes things just happen. And so 
it will be interesting to see if the other airlines follow suit to stay competitive with what United's doing. And whether it's going to last. They say it's going to be a permanent change, but we'll see. So many, yeah, unknowns about that industry right now, no doubt. That's it. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Remember, please keep texting us your questions and or your comments. The number is 849-2200. And we hope you'll stay right there. Channel 2 News at 6 is up after this break.